As a student, you can either see Ramadan as a hindrance or a blessing. Some people associate it with hunger and thirst and sleepiness and headaches. And other people associate it with being in a good mood, spending time with family, eating good food, and most importantly, getting closer to Allah. If we want to get as much as possible out of the month of Ramadan, from a student's perspective and just a general perspective, we need to see it as a blessing. I'll be sharing how to optimize your studying during this month and also two routines that you could follow. Now firstly, you need to know that increasing the amount of worship you do, like reading Quran and praying Tarawih and so on, that's not going to decrease the amount you could study in a day in the slightest. We usually think about it in a superficial type of way, like saying, well I'm going to be spending more time than usual worshipping, which means I'll be spending less time than usual studying, right? No, because we need to take into account the concept of barakah. You know, sometimes I'll sit down for 45 minutes and I'll study, and by the end of it, I feel like I've gotten two hours of studying in because my studying was just so efficient and effective. But then other times I'll sit down for two or three hours and it feels like I only got 30 minutes in. In my opinion, if you increase the amount of worship you do sincerely, then every studying session you do will feel extremely efficient and effective. So when you study in Ramadan, it just feels like your mind is clearer. You could understand problems without much time and effort and studying just becomes more efficient. So don't ever think that you have to compromise the amount of worship you do during Ramadan just to study a bit more. That being said, studying during Ramadan will not and should not be easy. The first couple of days especially will be difficult. I'll assume that most of us haven't fasted that much ever since last Ramadan. So the concept of going 16 hours or even more without food or water is kind of foreign to our bodies because we haven't fasted in like 11 months. So in the first couple of days while your body adapts, you should expect that there's going to be a dip in your energy levels, your mental clarity and all that stuff. So expect a dip in your studying as well and be flexible enough so you can accommodate that dip. But once we've adapted, the way we can overcome studying while being sleepy and hungry and thirsty is to have a strict schedule that optimizes when we study. There's a lot of factors that go into how you're going to shape your routine. And the biggest one is are you on study leave or do you have a holiday or are you still going to school or maybe work? If I was going to school or university or work, meaning that I can't sleep from the time of Fajr all the way to Dhuhr, then this is the routine I'd recommend. Go to sleep right after Tarawih, which would probably be around 10 p.m., 11 p.m., maybe a bit earlier, maybe a bit later, depending on where you live. And I'd sleep all the way up until Suhoor or Tehri, as you Daisies like to call it. I'll eat, I'll drink water, I'll pray Fajr, and then I'll probably have around two or three hours up until I have to go to work or school or whatever. That time between praying Fajr and then up until I have to go to school or work, that's when I would recommend studying. Trust me, I know it sounds hard, but the time right after Fajr is one of the best times to study. No one is awake to distract you, you've just eaten, so you're not hungry, you've drank water, so you're not thirsty, your mind is just clear. Trust me, try this and you'll see that the knowledge just flows right into your brain like water. Now of course, then you go to school or work or whatever, then when you come home, I'd recommend sleeping right away, taking like a two hour nap. And by the time you wake up, it'll probably be right around iftar time, so you eat, you pray tarawih, and then you repeat. And if you're going to school, try to maximize the amount of studying you do so that you don't have to study after. Try to study in your lessons or freeze or in break time so that when you come home, you can just rest. The second routine I'd recommend is what I would use if I had a holiday or study leave or I'd basically just be at home all day. I'd stay awake from after iftar, after tarawih, I'd stay up until fajr, and then after praying fajr, I'd then go to sleep. I'd sleep all the way up until Dhuhr and then when I wake up, that's when I would study. The time between Dhuhr and Maghrib is probably around 5-6 to six hours, which means you could study for half of them, 3 hours, and then for the rest you could do whatever you want. The beauty about this routine is that you don't have any broken sleep, you can just sleep for one long stretch. And also, all the time you're sleeping is when you're fasting. You're not sleeping between Tarawih and Fajr, meaning you're not missing out on any time where you could be drinking water or eating food. Now there are some general rules for studying in Ramadan and the biggest one is there's two times where you should not study. The first one is the two hours right before Iftar. That's usually when hunger is at its max, you know, you just keep watching YouTube videos about food, you're thinking about what your mom is cooking up, and so studying at that time will be extremely difficult. You're just going to get distracted, you're hungry, you're thirsty, you're tired. And the second time is between iftar and tarawih, because that's probably when you're in a food coma, <laughs> you've just stuffed yourself. So studying will be quite difficult. Another rule is to not limit yourself. After a couple of weeks, you're going to find that studying in Ramadan is not even that hard. So you should think big, try to study longer and harder. And looking at it from a biological point of view, as cavemen, we would only fast if we literally had no food. And if we have no food, we're risking starvation, then that's when our brain should be at its A-game, trying to figure out how we're going to find food. And so when we fast in Ramadan and we study, it's common to feel alert and focused because you're in that state, you're in that fasted state. And finally, don't forget the real goal of Ramadan, which according to chapter 2, verse 183, is to gain God consciousness. Do your daily prayers, do dhikr, read Qur'an and pray tarawih and ultimately that's what's going to maximize your studying during Ramadan.